And as we continue this healing light, we know, Jesus, that you are with us and you are always with us. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. No one can touch us, for God is always with us. Ah, cell phone. I'm sorry. I just got this cell phone. Hello? Oh, hey. Maybe. Who are they playing? We're here today with John Heyman. Hello. Yeah. Who, who is a writer on Curb Your Enthusiasm. And a producer. Excuse me, producer. consulting producer. I consult. Well, the, the, if you have a problem, you come to me and I consult. By the yes. way, you do. It's true. Know, he does. You're great. <laughs> but, for, but for our purposes, for yeah. season three, he was not a producer. He was no. an actor. Yes. He was. You, I, yeah. was, I was an actor on two episodes, the rare opportunity to... Uh, and by the way, having watched it, you're excellent. Okay, first Nothing of all, I well, sucked. No, no, let's Johnny. Get, let's by the way, that's one so thing. into your character. No, let's let's get this straight. Okay, were you Off playing it bat. real? No, shut up. I that's am we're playing it begin. real. Stop. I, Stop. Stop. We'll discuss it when we get to your part. Okay. But you were young and handsome, and you were good. Uh, see, I'm not buying into the young and handsome part. He was. He came on no, the, and the screen. I'm like, oh, look at the young John Hayden. But no, no, he was young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say handsome, but he wasn't ugly. And no, also, he was also, handsome. Uh, and also, I to me, it's more concerned with how great he did. Yeah. Now, um, can I just can I just introduce? We're on yeah. season three, episode yeah. two, the Benadryl Brownie. Yeah. And you are Jeff Garland, and I am Susie Essman, and you are. I know this. I know this. Uh, John Heyman. Oh. And Jeff is with us wearing a Red Sox, I mean, I'm sorry, a White Sox cap. Uh, yeah. And a Clippers sweatshirt, which is kind of a mixed metaphor. I don't know. Here, the White Sox hat, you know, I'm a big and Cub fan. you're not fan. a Sox fan. No, I'm a, well, I like the Sox. I'm, you know, the Cubs fans don't hate the Sox. The Sox, fan, Sox fans same, hate the, the Yankees Cubs. Mets. Well, I like we that thing at the... Wrigley when they're yelling at each other. Oh, yeah. The tank. yeah. I love that. It's pretty but cool. But Johnny, you'll agree with me. What's we that? don't hate the Mets. No, I What's, like the Mets. But the Mets hate us. Yes. We that's have no reason as Yankee fans way, to hate the Mets. We're the reverse. Na uh, nationally, American League, American League. Yeah. Anyhow, this hat represents for me when I was a big Sox fan, which was the very early 70s, like 73, 74. And they had a player named Dick Allen. They also mm -hmm. had a player named Bill Melton. Don't, call him, don't call him Richie. I Remember? know. Remember? You can't call him well, Richie. Well, by the way, Dick Allen was a badass. Just the baddest. And our listeners, I'm sure, are really curious. Anyhow, <laughs> the Clippers shirt, sweatshirt is I'm a season You're a Clippers fan. I'm a Clippers fan, season holder of the Clippers. By the way, I have to say, yeah. no offense, although this will offend you. I think that's a violation of wearing two teams. I wouldn't wear a Yankee hat with right, a Let's take a step Hawks back. Thing. Let's take a step back. Violation of what? Of you don't, if you wear the, like I'm wearing a Blackhawks shirt, I'm not yeah. going to wear a Yankee hat with it. I mean, what is, no, you're showing one thing it's at a time. Mixed okay, message. let's mixed just, message. Let's I'm not, I'm not happy. Happy. By the way, I'm wearing Crocs today. I have pants on. Crocs. Are you? Yeah, I'm wearing Crocs. And <laughs> it's basically called, I threw on what I wanted to throw on, which was easy because I barely slept last night and I'm happy to be here. Let's move on. And can I just say that I want to point out that Heyman is wearing sunglasses for two reasons. One, he forgot his regular glasses. And two, it's an homage to our dearly departed friend, Richard Belzer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. I made no, that up. Yeah. Did, he have, did, he ever, did he wear glasses all the time in Lorna? He yes. wore shades. He He's, wore shades. He, he was, was very known. light sensitive. The way oh, he Richard, was, huh? My question, weren't he and Richard Lewis arguing about who invented, wore the black, because they both wore black all the time. Yeah. And I think there was By a the bone way, of contention. You know, Lewis. and he, Yeah, yeah, yeah but Lewis stole. thinks everybody steals everything. Well, I know. <laughs> I, there's a comedian that he thinks stole his rhythms. Uh, there, yeah. But Richard, I think, was one of the great originals. That's what oh, I think. Oh, he was. Absolutely. He was. And absolutely. I don't think he saw Belzer and went, I'm going to wear black. I think that's No, just I wasn't that. taking sides. I, I just think that they could have thought of it simultaneously. Oh, that's oh, that's uh, yeah, enjoy. All right. All right we, so we start. start and we by start. the way, there's nothing worse than than uh, chit chat. That it's like when I listen to Howard Stern and they chit chat. I hate it. I oh, don't like. Get it. with the program. All right, Susie. Why are you holding it up? Unless it's entertaining. 
Okay, so <laughs> we start out the episode yeah. at the Cell Depot, yeah. dating, dating, dating. Um, and speaking of dating, um, Richard Lewis tells Larry that he thinks he found his soulmate. For the, for the ten thousandth time, time. Yeah. even then it was the ten thousandth time. Yeah. I know season two, exactly two, three. season three. Yeah. And Larry's like, "Is this the one?" And right. and and Richard starts carrying on about how he loves her soul. Her looks are irrelevant. And then he gives one key piece of information. The one, of the, the only downside. What do you think of this color? I don't like. Huh? It's too Blue? flashy. Yeah. She's a Christian scientist. And She's a what? It's a Christian scientist. He's a Christian scientist, and I've met, and it's. Oh I'm not, dear. Did you just no. say, "Oh dear"? Yeah. I, was, I don't think you've ever said that in your entire life. Well, I, no did, one's ever no, told if, me they were dating Christian any, scientists can, before. No, I, I've been no, saying no, it. If, if, if anything ever called for an "Oh dear," holy it's cow! Me a, a Christian, Christian scientist. scientist. She's a Christian She's scientist. She's a Christian scientist. Right. <laughs> and it's, for, it's not can about you her think looks. of a worse thing for Richard? The combo. That's well, the, why it's the, funny. The hypochondriac that he is. Yeah, with, yeah. with the, and he'll take whatever it takes, which is the right. premise of this episode. Right. And Larry, when he says she's a Christian scientist, Larry says, "Oh dear." I love that. I didn't yeah. even notice oh, that because I love when I hear something, I either say, "Oh God" or "Oh my." Usually, "Oh my." Well, well, Richard comments on it. He says, "I never, I've never heard you say right. oh dear' in my life." It By the way, be- I can't. I've never, heard, I've never heard him say "Oh dear" except for this moment. I'm not even, you know. I don't even think he's just used the word deer in in referring to an animal or as a <laughs> word of affection. I don't think he like has. Like he's never it. said deer in the headlights, for example. Yeah. I've actually heard him say, oh, dear. Oh. Yeah, he, he said it before. Okay. But I don't know if he said it before this. And uh, Larry starts discussing the Christian science issues. Right. With, with him. Like uh, she, she won't bring him medicine if he needs it. She doesn't even have a medicine cabinet, Lewis <laughs> says, you know. Richard's really funny in this episode. He's really he's funny. Great. And he looks he's amazing. Great. He looks so handsome. Yeah, he's, he's great. Not yeah. as handsome as the young John. <laughs> All right. That's <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> okay. And then he gets the phone, the XR71. Richard has the same phone. And these these early cell phones, it, it's just so funny to see the technology yeah. and the yeah. whole thing. And it goes out on occasion is the only problem with it. Yeah, that's disgust. So, uh, yeah. And I think Larry did what we all do, what we all did back then. Very excited about the first call yeah, on the cell phone. The first call on the cell you're phone. You're my first cell. Because these phones, these flip phones, what what was before flip phones were those giant walkie talkie yeah. yeah. Vietnam looking things, yeah. you know. Well, like you were calling in an airstrike. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. All right. So uh, Richard then brings up to Larry that he wants him to watch his special. Mm hmm. And come over for dinner Friday night, you know, with Deborah. Larry says, come over to our house for dinner with Deborah, mm-hmm. your soulmate. And then Larry then calls Cheryl to see, oh, it's working. And and Rich is going to come over for dinner and um, call Ted and we'll get Randy, the chef, played by young, handsome John Heyman, to cater the dinner. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Richard says, she's allergic to peanuts. She's allergic to peanuts. And 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 can Jeff come? Because you're his manager, obviously. Right. And um, Larry says, and, and Larry tells Cheryl she's allergic to peanuts on the phone. Very, in a very serious very tone. Very serious tone. Yeah. And then, you know, Larry says, my friends for a change. Because, you know, up at, we were talking right. about this on the car right over here, about your your ex-girlfriend's friends. And, uh, oh, jeez. Um, they do. Uh, well, we've had so many episodes up until this point where you know immediately it's Cheryl's friends. They're out to dinner, you know, immediately it's By the way, it's always it's Cheryl's, Cheryl's friends. friends. Yeah. And let me let me add this on the bonus thing. My lovely ex-wife, Marla, I don't recall ever in 25 years of marriage, and I'm talking about ever, where it was a group of my friends that Is we that had dinner true? with. Is that true? 100%. Now, not to say we didn't go out for dinner sometimes with my friends, but when she had people over, not my friends. Always her friends. All nice people. But not my friend. Yeah. And also, as comedians, you know, we're carny folk. We understand each other. And these were all people who were not carny folk. Yes. So you, know, you, you and I talk about that all the time. Yeah. You got to see so is so funny. And it's usually something we hate. And you go, yeah, no, no, yeah. no or, you, you know, the Morty Gunty isn't fun. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, I go pro Morty Gunty. Are you pro Morty Gunty? Just based on the name. Anything he says, anything he said, I was good I with. I think it was Morty Gunty and the Funny Company or something. Like <laughs> no, that. either way, it's funny. Morty Gunty 
Conti was actually a funny guy. He was Morty Conti for those who don't know, which is almost everybody listening. I barely was know him, and I brought him up. Borscht Belt comedian. He used yeah. to work the the mountains, the Catskills, yeah, yeah. and I'm and Alan Zweibel used to write for him. No way. Conti, yeah. Yes, Alan Zweibel used to write jokes at seven bucks a pop. How long Seven, did you go out with Bill Boggs for? With Bill Boggs. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. Just going to throw Bill those Boggs. out. Then we're at the dinner party. Yeah. And it's Jeff, Richard Lewis, Deborah, Larry, and Cheryl. And everybody's having fun, and they're enjoying themselves. They're laughing. And Richard and, and Deborah tell them that they're going to the Emmys. And Deb, Deborah had a dress made from Armando in Beverly Hills. And Cheryl is having an Emmy party, and everybody's all jolly. And then Jeff asks for ketchup because he can't eat steak without ketchup. Right. I actually like ketchup with steak. By myself. the way, a lot of people do, but I have to say it's for look, I don't I really don't eat steak anymore an occasional skirt steak. You know, I'm primarily a vegetarian, primarily. You know, I'll have fish, I'll have meat, chicken, but anyhow, no one gives a shit. Anyhow, the point being is... Well, if you have meat and chicken, you, I think you're pretty much not a vegetarian. No, 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 no. I, I said, can look it up. I said, an occasional no, no. steak. I said mostly. I mean, I'm not talking about I have meat every fucking week, even. All right. Anyhow, um, uh, meat that sucks or is mediocre, you got to have a whole fucking bottle of ketchup and smother that thing. But if it's a good piece of meat, that's really insulting to the I chef. I eat meat very rarely but I do like a little ketchup with my steak. Sorry. All right. All right. So well, you, you call Randy, Randy and, and Larry Or Larry John says, Hammond playing the chef. Yes. Yeah, make object Larry says, ways. you can't ask a chef for ketchup. Right. And Everybody's in agreement. And it is. Chicago, don't ever say you're putting ketchup on your hot dog. It's a crime. On a hot dog. On a crime. Oh, a my crime. mother used to do that and drive me nuts. I go, what are you doing? No, but in Chicago, that's like a Chicago joke. You go to any hot dog stand and you ask for ketchup, you're going to get shit. Do you know and what you my know, mother- there's many, many hundreds, thousands of hot dog stands in Chicago. You got to get mustard. Well, I would only get mustard on yeah, a hot really? dog if I would ever eat By a By the hot way, dog. I took a friend of mine and his daughter to a Bears game and- the hot dog guy is coming around, you know, and his daughter and everyone heard this says, can I have some, they're from, they're not, they're from, they live in North Carolina. Can I have some ketchup? And we all started booing her and I stood up. How dare you? This is my friend's daughter. Where do you get off? Ketchup. And everyone was screaming at her. It was hilarious. My mother used so. to put ketchup on spaghetti. That's how she would I've give us spaghetti. Oh, it, was horrible. it was horrible. It was horrible. That's just she was a horrible thing, by the way. cook, my mother. Ketchup on and I those know. famous spaghetti places. I forget what it's called. No, no, no it's it's a uh, skyline. Yeah, and it's chili, right? Not, not ketchup. They, they but they put ketchup in there too. I believe. I know it's chili. Okay. It's crazy. Right. Anyway, so. Um, okay, so then ketchup is insulting. Larry says, and enter. Chef Randy, a young, handsome John Heyman. And they all say, the food is great. The food is great. And so now tell us about the about Randy, John. <laughs> How'd no. you get the part? Okay, well, this... <laughs> now, we know you go way back with Larry, as far yes, back as, as far as further back do. than we do. And you wrote right. on Seinfeld, correct? Right. And uh, For how many seasons did you write on 42? Seinfeld? 42. Uh, just one. Just one. And, uh, you know, and we had done... I, don't know, I just I, I knew Larry when we were in his apartment, the on, real apartment, on 43rd and the Street. real Kenny Kramer lived across Kenny the Kramer, way. The, the Kramer is ba Kramer is based, based on Kenny Kramer, Kenny Kramer who right. lived across the hall. When from Larry. Larry lived in Manhattan Plaza on Forty yeah. Third right. and Ninth yeah. in and a studio apartment, you yeah. would walk and exactly. I know it's not a show about Seinfeld, obviously, or a podcast about Seinfeld, but he. It was when I look back on it. You know, we both doors would be open. They lived across from each other, across the hall. And I'd be sitting there with Larry, and I'd usually bring a sandwich from uh, Carnegie or something and watch the Nick game or whatever. And Kenny Kramer would come across in a bathrobe and not even looking at Larry, go, what's the score? Larry would be writing, actually, on a yellow pad and not look up and tell him the score. And Kenny Kramer would open the refrigerator, drink some milk, Shut it, and then walk over. And that was the start of a cottage industry, <laughs> as, as it turned out. I mean, you know, it's just uh, amazing. So anyhow, yes, we go way back and you know, pre-Seinfeld, pre-everything. And uh, he said, come in, uh, called me up and said, can you come in for this part? And I went, of course, I come in, and I'm 
sitting uh, outside the office, which is where the auditions were, uh -huh. at least they used to be. And uh, uh, Grant Heslov, who is now a quite well-known producer and partner of George Clooney, but was an actor originally. Is good out actor, there, too. And, solid, and a solid, really good, good actor who yeah. I knew... Because he had been on uh, Peter Melman's show, It's Like You Know, and it's he like was you. really good. Yes. As so good, as a matter of fact, that we wrote an episode just to get him back in and bring the character back. And he knew that, and he was very friendly. And one of these people, you know, you just naturally laugh with, and he's a great actor and a, a really good improv actor. And what are you reading for? He's reading for the same part. And I go, well, I hate why that. is he calling? Why is Larry calling me in for this? He's got Grant Heslov here. W why are you doing that? So I go in, I go in before Grant and I go in and it's just Larry and Larry Charles who, who directed the episode. I wasn't there that day? No. I really? I don't believe you were. Okay, you or I been. sat quietly witnessing the greatness of John Hayden. Uh, well, <laughs> anyhow, so it's everyone I know. I, mean, I didn't know Allison, but um, everyone I know, it's not really like an audition. No, I mean, Allison didn't to, cast then. She so, didn't? Uh, no. Oh, whoever no. it was. Yes. Um, and... So Allison was cast, Allison Jones, best yes, right. comedy casting director in Hollywood. And she uh, she uh, came on later. Oh, she, did. she was my first choice. When when she did she, do what it. season did she come on? Do you remember? Four, maybe. Okay. Uh, and she's been, you know, anyhow, she's the best there is. So. Right. Well, whoever it, w it was was just sitting there. So it wasn't. It was Gene Rayburn's daughter. Keep uh, going. Oh, that's right. She had the long microphone. I mm -hmm. wondered about that. Um so it wasn't almost like I was auditioning. I mean, I know all these people. And uh, I said, before I started, I said, Larry, you got Grant Heslov out there. Listen to he's him self-sabotaging. Well, That's fed, what the chef does. So he, there you well, go. Well, you, so I said, look, he's, he's, you're going to give him the part. He's much better. <laughs> He, this sounds he, like Randy the chef. Well, he, I wonder why you got the part. Well, that's the that's the uh, upshot of it. I mean, I kept saying, just hire him. Like, I'll do something else. And he's right there. And he, I know. And Larry Charles and I both went, yeah, that's it. That's what we want. I didn't even actually audition. I just said, give it to Grant Heslov. And they gave me the part. And he knew it because I ran into him later and told him, uh, the story and the few times I would run into him, he would always give me shit. And I go, well, it turned out okay for you, pal. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so th that's how I got the part right. saying I wasn't, they should not hire me for the part. I, I don't feel right, which as it turns out, and I didn't know at the time, because you just get like two lines, you know, of the outline for what the chef is, that that is exactly what the chef is. So that's how I got the part. Did you do an improv at all or no? No, I com all I said was, I did a, actually, that's not true. I did a little bit of an improv. Larry sat behind his desk and I don't know, he said, uh, just argue with me. I go, well, it's not the most difficult thing <laughs> in the world. And I, I think I maybe did it for 20 seconds and he just cut it off. He went, yeah, 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 you got it. And I, went, well, okay. <laughs> and I had to go outside and there's Grant waiting to go on, but. Knowing damn well, he had no chance. No chance against a young John Heyman. Uh, a ridiculous. young, handsome John yeah. Heyman. So then they oh, are going... Hold on. I'm sorry. Yeah. By the way, before that scene, I was in another scene that got cut. Um, and it was one... I don't know why they even had the scene. It was Cheryl and I in the kitchen. And she. I think she, she may have even mentioned don't put the in the scene... Uh, no, she doesn't mention no nuts because Randy doesn't know. That's right. I forget what we were doing, but that scene got cut. And also what I remember is uh, Larry, it was Larry Charles' first directing job. No, it wasn't. I, I think it was. No, it was. wasn't because he directed season one. No, he didn't. Yes, yes he, did. he did. He directed, he did. He directed well, me in the wire. I asked Larry he to bring, I said to Larry, can we, I actually said this to him. Uh, I, I don't remember what season it was. I said, can we bring, it might have been season two. I said, can we bring Larry Charles on as an executive producer? Oh, great idea. Boom. You know, but, yeah. but he, di but you he think directed, he directed, directed, I know he directed, he directed me But it was so right one. up his alley that I was like, yeah. and I also needed somebody, a compadre. Mm -hmm. And he became the greatest. I, I'm sorry, I, I thought it was this because I remember well, you him were saying wrong, to John. me, "You were wrong." You also thought him. it was Allison Jones, and you don't know if I was in the room. Who can Maybe trust Grant your Maybe Grant wasn't even the waiting room. Yeah. Maybe you're making that shit up. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I paid Larry so for the go part. to. Uh, they're they're watching the special. They, they go to watch the special, and Deborah 
is scarfing down the brownies yeah. that Susie made, that Jeff went to pick up Sammy and took the brownies well, we from the house. We'll find that later. Well, no, you said, you said, I dropped off Sammy and brought the brownies. Okay. And she said that the best brownies she's ever had, and she's eating them, eating them. Susie, can I interrupt just for one second? Yeah. Because of that, that scene with the ketchup. <laughs> I don't know if he was doing it as part of the scene or if he was just doing it, but... Somehow they were talking about statins, you know, the stuff you take at, yeah. at the table yeah. for, uh, you know, to lower your cholesterol. And Richard is talking about it. He goes, ah, oh, this stuff is great. He goes, look at this. I can eat a thing of butter. And he took a bite of like a slab of butter <laughs> at, 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 at the table. I can't believe it wasn't in. Unless my, it wasn't unless in. they were no. just doing, no, I know it wasn't in <laughs> what happened, but it may have been just he was talking to Larry like right before the scene, like yeah. you guys do a lot. Yeah. But I, I was like, what the fuck is... <laughs> no, I, I think that had nothing to do with Larry or a conversation. I think he, that's... He just did it. That's that's Lewis the magician. Keep going. Okay, so then we there's so many remotes. There's a million remotes. There's like 10 remotes. And they have this guy, Mike, who fixes it. And he comes in every week to fix it. And Cheryl's like up, upset that she's got an Emmy party this Sunday. And you have to fire Mike. She says, you have to fire Mike. And Larry, Larry says, I can't fire Mike. He's black. And and he's, he's Larry's trying every remote. And Cheryl wants one remote. Oh, by the way, the three women with Cheryl are her, her actual three friends. Yes. Just to, you know. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the remote's not working, and everybody. And Larry says, "Let's play Scrabble." And Richard says, oh, "Let's wait, play Twister." Oh wait, they're not Twister. in that scene yet, are they? They're, they're, no, that, no, that's the end. That's okay, the end. My uh, Larry says, uh, 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 "Richard Lewis says, Let, let's play Twister. Let's go to my house." And then Deborah doesn't feel well. Deborah's like, "I don't feel well." Wait, wait, hold on. Did, is Larry? Is this word that Larry's trying to put in the videotape of Richard special? No, they're trying to. Uh, what are they trying to watch? They're Richard to, Special. Yeah, they're trying to watch yes, Richard Special. Yes. But it's not a tape, it's the satellite By the way, dish. I, oh, right. That's for the Emmys. Right. So then Deborah <laughs> says she doesn't feel well. And she asks if there's any peanuts in the brownies. You know, any peanuts in the dinner? And I told you on the phone and Cheryl didn't hear it. Then we find out that the call dropped out. Cheryl didn't hear about the peanuts and there's dropouts on that phone. And Deborah says all she could do is wait it out and... and, and uh, the, the, Richard says, can't you take a nap? And why don't you just drive? Oh, then Richard says, sir, I get home and I'll, I'll be fine. What about, what, you want to just drive home? No, I don't really feel comfortable driving myself. She I'd needs like you to take, you take her home, <clears throat> you know? I mean. No. All right, we're going. You're such a fucking idiot. How can you do this? She's not looking well. Why won't you? You got a cell phone, you fucked up. Yeah, we'll, we'll watch it. Don't worry. It's horrible. Scrabble? I love to play Scrabble. I said it. I kind of got in the mood. Let's get it. Really? You want to play? I'm all over it. Let's Absolutely. Go. Okay. You don't need to play. It's better with two. Give me milk. That was so fucking cold. <laughs> you know, that was well, so by the way, I'm watching it and I'm actually kind of angry at his character. And I don't know if he would do that in real life, but it was literally how it affected him. Totally. It was so narcissistic. Yes. You know, that's why it says, can't you drive yourself, take yeah. a nap, drive yourself home. Yeah. And she will not. We, we have. But we it's know rude. She's... And by the way, for the one time with Larry uh, standing with Cheryl and, I, for, oh, and myself, we're all saying go. But Larry, let her take her home. But Larry is in that moment. And it's a rare moment where he's not saying take her home to make his life better. No, he's he actually, actually going, thinking of her. Yeah. He's like yes. going, this is fucked up. You yeah. know, so well, you uh, could see that she's in distress. And um, and she won't take a Benadryl. She won't take medication because she's a Christian scientist. And then uh, Larry says uh, to Jeff, you want to play Scrabble? And Jeff says, yeah. And Larry says to Cheryl, yeah, you, we don't need you. It's better with two. He just dismisses <laughs> Cheryl right there. And then Jeff says, you have any milk? <laughs> no, that's the end of this. That's the button. That's the button. Then Jeff and Mike are at, Mike is the, is the cable fixer right. guy. They're at O'Groats. And Larry fires Mike, and, and Mike says... Just be honest, man, because I'm black, right? Right? Why? Well, that, you could, that couldn't be crazier. Crazy. Why did I hire you? That was over the phone, man. You didn't know I was black at the time. By the way, that's played by Anthony Griffith, uh -huh. a friend of mine, a comedian and actor from Chicago. Uh, he was a wonderful stand-up. I used to see him in plays, He's terrific too. in this, also. Yeah, great. He's a great actor. Yeah. All right, there you go. And let, let's just discuss that because I'm black issue. Well, that's a recurring motif. Theme with Larry. And it's, it's the same... 
it's it's fascinating. It's the same dynamic. He doesn't want to appear bigoted in any way, and he's so overly concerned about it. Any time in the show we're talking about, it, yeah. any time he has any interaction well, with and, a person that, but of color. Only, but, but, yeah, it could be anything that he doesn't want them to feel bad that he's using that reason. And by the way, he's never firing anyone for that reason, right. and he gets called out because everyone thinks it is that reason. Right. Larry says, I hired you over the phone. I didn't know you were black. And, and, uh, and Larry, I'll fire white people. And he blames it on Cheryl. Larry blames it on Cheryl. <laughs> and Mike says, it, it, the check comes, and Larry's like, well, I got it, I got it. Mike says, I'll leave the tip. I'll mm -hmm. leave the tip. And Mike is pissed off, and he walks right. out. Because yeah. Larry just fired him for really yeah. no cause, as we find out. But he thinks his cause. And Larry sees the tip, and he sees that there's not really enough there. And he goes back, and he adds a couple of dollars. And he see Wanda is at another table, glaring at him. <laughs> Hey, Wanda. Yes, and, and she has a scowl on her face. She's glit, yes. And there will be a price to pay. Of, always. Yeah. And oh, then, by the way, Lake Bell was the other actress. Okay, okay. I played Lake hey, Bell's maybe some, mother. Oh, you did, right. Yes. Uh, on that TV show she was yes. on. But the West thing is, magic. someone at home might be going, oh, I want to know. And they might be upset with you, Susie, for th dismissing me. Oh. Keep going. When we get the, the mail from our viewers, I will <laughs> answer oh, the them way, in kind. I'm sure there's a lot of mail <laughs> coming from viewers. Handwritten So next letters. we're Handwritten. at, next we, uh, Larry. Western Union. <laughs> Larry uh, goes Stop. to the door, uh -huh. knocks on the door, and a woman answers. And we find out that that's Deborah's mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's at Deborah's house or Deborah's mother's house. She's and staying Deborah's there. mother, I cannot remember the actress's name. But I was excited to have her because she was in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Mm -hmm. She was a, uh, oh, Pee Wee. They were like sitting in the dinosaur looking at the sky and that. She was really good in the movie. Yeah. So I was and so she's excited. she's really good in this. Yeah, she's great. And she I says, wish I knew her name. She says to Larry, are you here for the prayer group? <laughs> Which we know. He's not. <laughs> he's not. Diane, Diane Salinger. Salinger. And uh, as Deborah's mother. And, um... Larry says something about, you know, he's sorry about Deborah. And, and Diane Salinger, Deborah's mother, says, we're all responsible for our own lives. Oh, which dear is God. very profound and very true. Yeah. Oh, yes. It is. No, we're not. You got to give up control. And she, she, <laughs> then, uh, she then brings LD into the group. Well, doesn't he go see But then her he, first? he gets out. Right. He right, gets right. out. So LD, uh, Larry goes into Deborah's room. And there's a, a black man there fixing the cable, which is not Mike. It's a different black man cable fixer. And then Richard and Deborah are in the room. And Deborah's like, you know, I'll be fine to go to the Emmys. And now her, we never see her face. Which now, is, by the way, so much better oh, in that situation than you put prosthetics on. Right. We look at her horror. I mean, to use your imagination of how swollen and Elephant horrible man her looking. face must look. Yeah. I just, right from the get-go, I thought, oh, I remember. We didn't show that. That was brilliant. And that whose was... choice was that? Do you remember? Well, Larry's. Larry's. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, and also, we didn't have a good budget back, the big that's budget. Right. That's right. So the prosthetics would was, have been expensive. That's right. Uh, Deborah's, I'll be fine. And, and Larry's, I'm so sorry about the peanuts. And Deborah is insisting on going to the Emmys. And Larry's like, take a Benadryl. And Deborah says, it's a betrayal of my faith. And, uh, you know, then then uh, he asks if, if, the, if the cable guy is any good and the remotes, he goes off on that. And then Larry leaves and he's drawn into the prayer circle. This is when... <clears throat> He's doing the pinkies. Well, yeah, he's not going to hold hands. And he, but not only is he doing the pinkies, he's trying to break free right. with his pinkies. Right. And Larry is saying, you know, he can't pray for Deborah because he's got bad karma yeah. and she'll end up even sicker. <laughs> Which we filmed a scene like that yesterday. And of course, yes. And of course, he joins hands. He ends up with two men, which is, you know, like yeah. he tried to make it right. a boy yeah, girl, yeah, boy yeah. girl. Yeah. But he ends up and with two like, men. She needs to be near her husband. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's so uncomfortable. And then his phone goes off. And what is the ringtone? I, I don't remember. Hava Nagila. Hava Nagila, right. Oh, that's right. Oh, my God. You know, for somebody, uh, it's Larry's personal life, but he's not really, he's proud to be a Jew, but he's so not religious. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. so, but he uses so much Jewish comedy. 
Well, you because know? that's I how he it. was brought up. Even well, same you know, with me. Yeah. It's a cultural thing. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying he just, he does it. It's so beautiful. Like Woody Allen did that, you know, great. He did sure. a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so there the Havana Gil is going off in the middle of the prayer group, the Christian science prayer group. And then we see uh, they, they leave, Larry and Richard leave. And Richard's like, I'm going to be humiliated. I can't bring it to the Emmys. I'm going to be humiliated. And it's all your fault. And if they go into the whole peanut versus the cell phone. And Larry says, I thought you didn't give a shit about how she looks. Yeah. <laughs> you love her line. soul. Yeah. You know, um, which it, even if, even I have to say, if Richard did love his soul. Her soul, yeah. Love her soul. Why does he want to be seen with no, somebody no, who looks like and that? And also to go to the Emmys with her head swollen. Right. That's a so unsettling. And then they get what, into what a whole discussion. No, I was just say, <laughs> it, at no point do either Larry or Richard show any concern for what this woman is suffering. Yeah. It's just well, all they, they, about that. John, they do. They what? want her to take the Benadryl and get better. Yeah. They can't believe but they she... Want her well, to get but the reason it's primarily like, but it's just for the so Emmys. she doesn't look like that. Yeah, it's primarily for the Emmys. It's, it's not out of the goodness true, of the heart. It's all about that. Even yeah. if she just, even if it had nothing to do with the Emmys, they would just be like, take a fucking Benadryl. Yeah, It'll knock it right out. Right. And it would. I know. I had an allergy attack the other day. I was sitting under some tree that right. I was just... And I went home and I took a Benadryl and I was fine. Wait a minute. You sitting under some tree? In an outdoor cafe. <laughs> There's I a tree a, in an outdoor cafe, a big one? Yeah, and I had an allergy attack. Okay, okay. but she's hell-bent on going. She won't take the Benadryl. Uh, 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 Richard says a typical Richard thing. No, I know, I know, I yeah, know. She's ready. Yeah, no, no, it would match her head. A dress yeah. made of, uh, you know, turnips and blood. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to try to, like, yeah, give her a shot. How, then they come up with the brilliant idea, put it, she loved those brownies, Put it in a brownie, right? She'd never know. And Larry says he's going to get the recipe from Susie. Cheryl will bake it. Next thing that you know, he knocks on our door, Jeff. Mm -hmm. And I answer the door with a new character introduced. Oh, yeah. Oscar. Uh, Oscar, yes. You know, I watched it with Sari last night. She goes, you guys had a dog? I go, yeah, yeah. Oscar. For several seasons. Many seasons. Yeah, he was yeah. a great dog. That great was actually dog. two dogs. It was Hunter uh -huh. and... And Rhett was the two dogs oh, that played Oscar. I remember one of them being named Sarsaparilla. Uh, I don't recall that. No. Okay. But they were beautiful German shepherds, gorgeous mm -hmm. dogs. And I said that I got Oscar because now the By the way, can I also say, I never noticed it was <laughs> <laughs> I swear, until right now, I had no idea it was two dogs. I thought it was always one dog because they looked exactly. Oh my god, that's yeah. hilarious! Two Weren't there dogs. like nine lassies or something like that? Yeah, or something 20 like Rin that. Twenty Rin Tin Tins. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have to. They're, it's a dog. By the way, they had numerous gentle bends. Uh, Bart, the, the bear, bear, who's in this cocaine bear thing now. Yeah. There's a bear called. I think it's Bart. Who's been in every single thing that that involves a real live bear for the last fifteen years? Oh, he must be rich by now. Oh, he's loaded. He's loaded. And what was that joke way, you do did about a bear? The, it's a, what this movie is based on. About in real life in 1985, a drug plane crashed and a bear found this like ton of cocaine. And that's what the movie's based on. Right, and I, I had a joke about I it. I remember that it, in the old days yeah. Yeah. at Catch a Rising Star. Yeah. Okay, so Larry comes to our house, and I answer the phone, looking quite young as well, I have to but say. No, no, no. <laughs> I turned to Sari, and she agreed. I said, God, doesn't Susie look beautiful? And I told, also, I told Sari, I go, I was friends with her 15 years earlier. She was gorgeous. Oh, thank you, darling. Yeah, but you're less and less gorgeous over the years. And now we, I'm fucking with you. Keep going. You're so beautiful. But you know I what? Love Can you. I say something? I love your the face. The one thing about TV, What did I though, tell you yesterday how pretty you look? Thank you. But the one thing about TV, and you, you have to admit, you see yourself 25 years ago, and it's like, uh, you, we were okay, young. hold on. <laughs> Forget even young. Sari has a complete disconnect watching me. Because I am so heavy. And what's the word? Cherubic? Mm, I really you were cherubic. I had an angel you were big cherubic. round flat face. Yeah. And I, when I watch it, I get sad. She watches it. She you loves it. You get sad for, because you think about how sad it must have been that you were that, that you no, had No, no. I remember how I felt. Yeah. And I feel bad for that guy. Yeah. I, rem I uh -huh. feel so bad for that guy. And if that guy only knew the ridiculously horrible things that were on their way, 
Oh my God. And wonderful uh, things. By the way, yes, of course. But I'm saying in terms of my health, yeah. it's been a festival of shit. I mean, by the way, if you're listening, watching, whatever, I'm very healthy. And I, I never had cancer. I'm not in remission. Like, I'm very healthy. But the amount of times I've been punched in the face with serious illness, I, I've lost count. I'm going to be honest. So I look at that guy, and I think of what happened after, and I look at the guy, and it's really sad. But that was actually after the stroke. Yeah, that was post-stroke. Yeah. I had a stroke. We've talked about it. Yeah, another bing, bang, boom. Yeah. The only one that I've not strokey is the hour pilot per se the, I, oh, that's pre-stroke that's pre-stroke it was shortly that's, that's 1999 yeah 1999 okay so uh he comes to our house and i'm like what are you doing you don't call yeah. and then he tells me about the brownies and then jeff stole the brownies from his child's mouth which jeff by the came way came in and stole his little <laughs> girl's brownies and you're you're just you're, there's nothing to calm you at this point. No. It just is building and building to where you're screaming at each other, which is, we just filmed some of that yesterday. And by the way, yesterday... We weren't really screaming, though, oh, in, this, yeah, no, in the no, brownie were, scene. Yesterday no, no, we no, were no, in the no, brownie no, scene. Yesterday. Yeah. No, it's it's just like its own art form, its own thing, organism. Yesterday, I thought that was the best argument you've ever had with Larry. Really? Yesterday. Oh, I, I, I said to Jeff Schaefer, I go, I think this is Susie and Larry at their best in terms of arguing. And Jeff Schaefer said, yeah, I think so. He walked away and he, at the end of the day, he goes, it was. He goes, I and thought Larry about thought it. thought it was. was a little too hot. He's wrong. Okay. But in this scene, he asked for the, he says, well, it's a testament to the brownies. You know, he's, he's buttering me up in that right, way that he yeah. likes to do, which never yeah. really works. No, no, forget never really works. It does. Never, Here's never the works. two things. He will say things to you that you feel good about. Oh, really? Like he'll compliment you, whatever. But that last um, three seconds, three seconds. Yeah. Yes. But you um, do react positively. Then he asked me for the recipe and I tell him I can't give it. It's a secret family recipe. And he says, well, I'm known for keeping a secret, which we know is bullshit. And then he tells me that he said, I'll tell you a secret. By the secret. way, in real life, by the way, he's one of the best people. He is the best. He's a very good secret keeper. In terms of my friends, he is number one yeah. on the secret thing. He is. I, I love it when he when he does stuff like that and he goes, I'm known for, and it's some <laughs> obscure trade, you know, I'm known for being on time. He <laughs> and then goes, ask anyone, they will tell you that Larry David is always on time. It's No matter what the thing is, if he's in an argument, he's known for whatever the thing is. That but by the way, can I say... I don't ever call him ever being late for, you know, well, for anything. Yeah. yeah. Some's for work. So um, he decides to tell me a secret mm -hmm. to, to gain oh, my trust. A delicious secret. And he tells me. I'll tell you a secret. How about that? Nobody knows, not even Cheryl. Well, if you'd like to tell I, me. I might, I might be losing a testicle. You're kidding me. Yeah, it's not definite. The point is, I'm telling you, I'm sharing something with you because I trust you. Just the way I know you could trust me. Larry, I cannot give you the recipe. No, you can. No, you I can. can't. I can't. My grandmother, okay, may she rest in peace, entrusted that brownie recipe to me. And you're asking me to break a sacred confidence. It's not the Manhattan Project, you know? It's just a little sense of the recipe. Go get a mix or something. You're asking too much. You ask way too much. I can't. Oscar, come. I just told you I'm going to lose a ball. <laughs> Which, by the way, <laughs> early on we saw where he's desperate to have Cheryl not go. And he's trying to hold her to, like, have sex with her. What, what episode was that? Oh, that was the massage. A massage. Yeah. And then he tells her he has a lump. He doesn't even say where. Right. He just goes, I have a lump. Yes. I have a lump. You don't want to go when I have a lump. And so here, right, he'll go right to the, the things. Testicle. I might, might lose be a losing ball. a testicle. And I find that very interesting. But he's asking me to break a sacred confidence. And I can't. Well, by the way, here's the thing about I said, go that. get a mix. No, no. But, but yes. But the point being is when he presents his case, the way you're acting, you think you're going to give him the recipe. And then when we get to you, you just go off on it's your grandma's recipe. Right. He ain't getting it, which makes it funnier because you think. All right, because right. he says, I just told you I'm, I'm going to lose a ball. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah, you're making, asking me to break a sacred confidence. Yeah. Go get a mix. And then we cut to uh, Larry and uh, Cheryl 
and Richard, uh, and they're begging Cheryl to put the Benadryl in the brownie mix. And and Cheryl... Uh, she plays this great. Cheryl says, you don't, you don't want to take her. And Richard says, I want her to get better, which is, uh, you know, bullshit. Yeah. But by and, the way, Cheryl does the perfect amount of pushing. That's right. Oh, yeah. Perfect. She, like it's... Her her performance on the show is so subtle and perfect. And she as Jeff exactly and I have said it. in the past, she's really the only person that could do this with Larry. Right. In these I, early you know years, with especially. one word, when she's fed up, she just says, all right. All right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I know. She <laughs> said that the other day, and I said to her, how many times have you said that? <laughs> all right. <laughs> all yeah, right. It's her way of saying, all right. Another actress might go, that's enough. No, but she's she, subtle. But she said it. And by the yeah. way, playing against all these insane yes, people. Yes, perfect. She's completely perfect. All right, keep and, going. And Cheryl says, Why don't you buy deal? some brownies? You, put put yeah, it in yeah, there and get me out of it. We went over this. No, yeah. don't you know anything about tampering? Huh? Yes, I guess I don't. Do you know Tell anything about, about tampering? tampering? Well, you can't do that because the brownie will fall apart. And she says, well, why don't you bake it? Like, I don't know how to bake. And, no, and, but what was tampering? What was his meaning of tampering? Well, because he's, he's putting the... He's tampering oh, with the. She's saying put put the benefit. She in knows the, yeah. nothing of tampering. Right. I get it. I didn't pick it up. And, and also Richard, doesn't <laughs> doesn't Lewis? I think it's Lewis. Maybe it's Larry. Ap <laughs> appeal to her because it's a humanitarian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they they really both go, do. They, they both but, do. <laughs> and Richard says, "My heart is breaking for her big head." <laughs> um, and Cheryl's reluctant. And oh, he says something about it. Being it's a, a being carnival. A, yeah, she looks like a carnival. Oh, like she's yeah, in a car side right. show. A yeah, carnival yeah, yeah. side show. And Cheryl gives in. And Larry says, Can you bake? So <laughs> <laughs> she's never done it up until then. Which, by the way, Larry David, that would never be a qualification that someone could cook or bake. He, that, no. I, I can't see that being on his list. I got to find a woman that cooks and bakes. No. Um, and then they go back to Deborah's mother's house with the brownies, Richard and Larry. And uh, Larry says, my wife got the recipe and Deborah takes a bite. Nah, they're not the same because they, they're the mix and they're just not as good. And she's like adamant. They are definitely not the same brownies. But not only that, but forget the same brownies. They had to have tasted good. She is adamant that she's not going to eat them. Right. So the guys right. are fucked. Do you think she's suspicious at all? No. No, she I really doesn't like them. She really doesn't like it's them. It's on Cheryl. The other, the other ones were so great. She says they're horrible. Get yeah. them back. You no, know, I know. But Larry says, here, I'll leave them. And she goes, what do you want me to do? And she actually hands them back to him. Yeah, she was disgusted by yeah. the brownies. But, but, but and Larry then she followed says, it up with the, something. The, the, nice. Well, the, then she says, what time are you picking me up tomorrow for the Emmys? And then we see Cheryl on the sofa with her three friends and Wanda, the, three, the people yeah. you said. Yeah. Um, not that Wanda's not her friend, but yeah. Wanda was a hired actress at that point. A hired friend. A hired friend. And they're they're getting ready to watch the Emmys. They're getting to watch the East Coast the East feed. The East Coast feed, of the correct. Emmys. And uh, in, they're all fucking with the remote. Look at the directions. They can't get the satellite to go on, you know, and they, they're upset because they're missing Joan and Melissa for the pre-show and all of that, watching the New York feed. And then Wanda, Larry walks in and Wanda says, uh, what, what was that business I saw you uh, yesterday at the coffee shop? What business? The uh, business with the black guy. You fixed his tip. What happened? So, yeah. yeah. Wait, so. what happened? You, you didn't know. You're, you're, Larry's, no. a, Larry's a tip profiler. <laughs> fixed the black man's tip. What are you get, trying to get the NAACP image <laughs> award? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and Larry's and like, it wasn't awesome. a racial thing. Why'd you do the tip? Well, then why'd you tiptoe behind his back? It becomes a whole cause celeb between them. And then um, he st Larry storms out in the huff. I fired him. And she's, why'd you fire the black man? And the black man can't. And Larry's like, oh, the black man can't do anything wrong. Can't get fired. Can't yeah. get fired. And then Wanda gets up and turns on the satellite on the TV. On the power of it. Exactly. Yeah. And that was all that was wrong with it the yeah. whole time. And then we see Joan. <laughs> Which was a little startling to me, I have right. to say, to see Joan in well, the background. Well, first off, I love Joan Rivers so much. Yeah. What? And by the way, what I, I loved her as a person. She's just so nice. And I actually did her show. She had a podcast, it was a video podcast of In Bed with Joan Rivers. Right, right. And it's actually in her room. You get in bed yeah. with oh, her. Oh, wow. And you enter from her closet, <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny. And then we had the best conversation. She just is lovely. You know, John, as we've been doing this, show now we're on season through three it's like we're this is from you know 2001 two three and 
keeps people keep coming up who are dead. Yeah. You know, and it's like yeah. it's startling oh. to us. Yeah. I think it's so. There was Joan, and uh, she's talking about Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer, and uh, she calls <laughs> oh Richard Lewis, and she calls Come over Richard, Richard, Richard and, you know. yeah, and she calls over Richard, and she's Kelsey Grammer, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greats of our community. <laughs> oh my God, there's Richard. Oh my God, oh my God. It's, it's Richard Lewis. Richard, over here. Richard, Richard. Come on, sweet. No, 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 Joan, no, no, oh, no, just no, get no, over no, here. Okay, it's so really. good to no, see no, you. No. Oh my God! I, I, I've seen better faces on a hemorrhoid. When ET called home, did you pick up the phone? H- how are things in Loch Ness? <laughs> and there we go. Yeah, that's the end. Hilarious. That's the end of the of the. No, episode. I mean, and by the way, very unusual for it to end on Richard Lewis and or, or any of right. us uh, for us to be the the end of the show. I remember doing one thing once that it was the end of the show. I don't remember what that was, but that's rare. It usually ends on Larry. Yeah. Bump a bump a bump. Where was that film the Joan Rivers thing? Oh, it was a parking lot. Really? It was a parking lot near the beach. It was a parking lot, literally right wow. by the ocean. It was a, actually it was one of those parking lots that's uh, a, 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 off. Um, Probably by Casa del Mar over there because we filmed there before. Yes, but yeah. but uh, 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 south of Casa del Mar yeah. in the, one of the parking lots over there, and we set up all around it. That looked good. Yeah, it yeah looked, it I was really wondering good. though because it's obviously cut off. Yeah, like and no, I guess framing. if we did that scene now, we one of those theaters in Westwood, we probably would have done it. Um, uh, you don't like uh, it Jeff, a real movie theater. I don't know if you were there. Were you that there looked, that day? To make day? it look like an awards thing. I love how I'm giving you a look and you keep selling it to me. Well, the that's point. why I keep selling it because you know. ain't buying it. <laughs> Jeffrey, <laughs> yeah. were you there that day? What's the Joan Rivers? Yeah. Actually, I had to have been because I know where we filmed. Okay. So were those, those must have been her lines. Oh, They're typical of course. Her lines. Larry yeah. didn't write lines yeah, for yeah, her. Yeah, those are Joan And by lines. the way, I'm sure she improvised those lines in the moment. Yeah, they're Guaranteed. very Joan. Very, right, well, very we're, Joan. We're done here. We're done here, John Hammond. But, but, thank you so no, much. No, no, but John thank will you. be in our next episode. I know, episode. but for, for this episode. Yeah, well, we should thank him both episodes. Yes. All right, John, for this episode, your effort up until now, delightful. Well, thank you for Can an effort be delightful? <laughs> yes. Hey, can I come back? Yes, yeah. please well, do. How about next week? <laughs> We're going to be back with more with John Heyman. Please tune in. You could come every week as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, you're, oh. we, we love you. So, my God, we may have. Please.